Hello YouTube. I thought maybe some um, of you might be interested how to build your own uh, bench um, PC for programming and development and so on. And I thought maybe I can show you how I built my own one. And so I will try to uh, to let you take part in the in the procedure how to build a, a PC. Okay. First of all, I want to start with the main board. I always choose the manufacturer Asus. And when it comes to the main board, always keep in mind that the overall performance of the, the PC um, will be determined mainly by the, by the main board. For example, if you have a very, very powerful processor and not a powerful main board, it can slow down the whole PC. So when it comes to the performance at the end of the day, it's all related um, to the chipset you have, of course to the to the processor and the the RAM memory. So all components must fit perfectly together in order to achieve the maximum performance. And as I said, Asus is is a very very uh, um, powerful manufacturer for such um, main boards and uh, yeah I don't want to get much into detail here but you can nearly always rely on on the quality of Asus so I prefer this brand here so that's the main board as you can see the chipset is cooled underneath this this um, aluminum cooler here here is the processor socket I will choose a um, Intel i7 generation 7 here and here's the power generation some nice capacitors this looks like a, a MOSFET but the main MOSFETs are located below this this cooler here so that's that's it so far regarding the main board the next component is the processor I choose a a Intel i7 um, LGA1151 socket and it's the as I said before the seventh generation Intel i7 um, CPU the as you can see 7700K um, with uh, 4.2 gigahertz a very powerful processor and yeah it should be perfectly fine for my my application in order to insert the the processor into the the cpu socket a socket uh, you will have to identify the notch that's this one here or the, or the little arrow and also this one here and then carefully remove the protection um, plastic housing and now you have to be very very careful because if you damage some of these little contacts here then you can throw away your, your main board so be very very careful now so the next step is to unlock uh, this this bolt and flip away the cover and now the socket is revealed completely look at the nice um, lock capacitors here very very nice and now we can insert the CPU That's it. Don't apply any force here. The next here. step is to lock the the cover. Just put it like this, and then go to the to the bolt and lock it like this. And now you have to apply some force. Okay. And it must look exactly like this. 
The next step is to insert the random access memory. I always choose high quality brands like Corsair or Kingston or such such manufacturers. And as you can see, these um, memory kits always come also with additional accessories. This time also a fan. I'm not sure if I will use it, um, but we will see later. And these modules I choose um, 32 gigabyte um, uh, total memory means four uh, modules each H uh, eight gigabyte and as you can see the module runs at only 1.35 volts and at up to 3.6 gigahertz and these are the timings here but not all only the most important timings but every modern mod module has a um, e square prom inside a little IC like a um, uh, I squared C EEPROM and this IC stores all the um, timing configurations for the for each module so um, SPD means serial presence detect and if you insert this module to a main board the main board will automatically read the data from the IC and configure the module um, with uh, its optimized values. But sometimes you even can um, bypass the values and get um, much more performance out of your memory. We will try this later. So that's it regarding the DDR4 memory. You always have to um, ensure that you peel off all these protection foils here these little ones um, because they can be very dangerous if they get stuck in the in the fan or other components so always throw this away also the chipset um, always look on every uh, surface if there is a such a fall that you can peel off and do that so then I will insert the other three modules. So now I've inserted all four modules and always ensure that you buy these modules in a in a set because they have to match to each other um, in order to be able to run in dual channel mode for example. So don't buy for example this one uh, on the internet, this one in a shop. Always buy them together in a in a dedicated set and um, otherwise they will not match identically. So that's it. The next step is to attach the heat pipe cooler to the CPU. And before doing that, always carefully read the instruction manual of the CPU cooler because every cooler has nearly its own uh, mounting technique or mounting material or mounting method and you always um, have to ensure to use the right one because these coolers are normally suited for several CPU sockets um, and you always have to select the right mounting um, materials. If you do something wrong here you could easily destroy your CPU or even even the main board so always carefully read the instruction manual. So. Next step, I will attach the CPU cooler. Yeah. As I said before, this uh, CPU cooler comes with um, several mounting um, systems. For example, here for a Intel socket, here for a AMD socket. And you always have to ensure, for example, uh, that you use all these parts for an Intel processor and, for example, not to use this one. Yeah, that's it. And I will look inside um, what I can find. I installed the mounting brackets here and ensure that they are very um, tight, the, the screws, ensure that. And now before attaching the, the CPU cooler to the processor, um, we need the thermal compound. And this compound here as you can see 
the uh, good CPU cooler always comes comes with a thermal compound, but I never use this. I always throw this away, and instead I always use um, Arctic Silver Five. It's a very very powerful thermal compound, and the thermal conductivity is, is very very high. So always use a um, high power. Um, thermal compound. That's my recommendation here. The next step is to attach the thermal compound. Do it like this. So that should be enough. And then Use a plastic card, like a debit card or an old credit card or something like that, and Do it like that. You have to do it very, very careful. And the layer has to be very thin. So. And you always have some um, additional um, thermal compound to waste, but that's not a problem. And just have a look at the surface. Very, very thin layer on the CPU. Maybe I can do a little more here. And I will just correct that section. Just a second. Mm. No, it's okay. No, it's fine. Yep. And now I will attach the CPU cooler. Um, I've corrected the, the surface um, once again, and now it looks like this, and now it's really perfect. Very thin, um, very homogeneous, and now it should should work perfectly fine. So I've just just mounted the heatsink, and always ensure if you if you hold the the main board, always use the headsink to hold it. Always do it like this. Never from now on hold the board because then the the mass of the of the CPU cooler could destroy some components. Always hold the board like this. Okay, so now I will attach the fan and maybe if there's some free space I can also um, attach now the little, the little fan for the random access memory. We will see. I just missed a very important step. Before inserting all the components into the PC housing um, we have to test the, the, the mainboard and the CPU and the random access memory 
in order to verify that, if, that everything works perfectly fine. Therefore, I power up on the system and just ensure that you use a non-conductive um, um, bottom material in order to prevent short circuits. Uh, as you can see, some, some fancy LEDs here, but that doesn't matter. And so now I will switch on the system. And as you can see, this module has a um, built-in power on self-test um, seven-segment display. So that's really nice. You um, can clearly see that the power on self-test works perfect. Now every, everything is okay. And now we do have a working screen. As you can see, DDR4-2133, that is not um, the specified frequency of the, of the RAM, but we will adjust that. So for now, everything works perfectly fine. And as you can see, the CPU fan speed error detected. Um, that's due to the uh, low speed fans here. Uh, I will adjust that later. But for now, everything works perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and put this into the inside into the, the PC housing. Okay, the next step is to, to insert the power supply. That's a not a very good one. I will replace that later. And to to screw in all these bolts here and verify if all the screws are fitting and otherwise throw the screw away. Um, I already verified if everything is okay and now I can insert the um, the main board. Sorry, already missed a very important step. Um, you have to insert these shielding um, front end panel for the main board. I will do that and then I will um, insert the main board. As you can see I have now installed the SSD and also the um, random access memory um, cooler here and the, the system works fine right now. Um, yeah, I've also connected the front um, to the, the front panel um, and the uh, the RAM also works now at 3.6 gigahertz because I chose the uh, Intel um, Extreme Memory Profile. Here you can see the, the timings, and that's basically the maximum frequency of the RAM. Uh, not not the maximum. You could also overclock it a little bit, but uh, that's fine for me. And now the system works. And now I can install the OS. I will choose um, uh, Windows 7 64 uh, bit because it's uh, for me much more convenient than Windows 10. So let's see how this works. Um, I just decided to add some um, external um, graphic card and not to use the onboard uh, graphic uh, graphic interface. So I also installed this one and it's already detected in the system. So it should work perfectly fine.